Hall 83. From the Cameron Indoor Stadium in Durham, Indiana, it's the Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech and the Blue Devils of Duke University. This game is brought to you by Budweiser Light. The best never comes easy. That's why there's nothing else like it. Welcome to Durham, North Carolina, the site on the Duke campus, Cameron Indoor Arena for this afternoon's ACC college basketball game between Georgia Tech and Duke. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Kevin Slayton, along with John Andres. A lot of people might think this game isn't worth a whole lot between the sixth and seventh teams in the ACC, but, John, that's not the case with the seedings coming up for the ACC postseason tournament. Well, no one wants to play North Carolina or, of course, Virginia with big Ralph Sampson, and that's what today's game really has a lot of meaning for. You don't want to finish in the bottom. The last two teams will be matched against the first and second team in the uh, ACC playoffs, and that's what these two teams want to avoid. They'd like to finish sixth at worst, and that's what they're each going to try and do. If there is one word that can describe this matchup this afternoon, it would be youth. Both teams will start four freshmen, including the two best freshmen guard in the conference, if not the country, in Johnny Dawkins of Duke and Mark Price of Georgia Tech. Well, the visitors feature Mark Price is one of the best, as you say. He is a great outside shooter. He's only six feet tall, but he's very tough, very physical, and he's sensational from the three-point range. We're going to talk a lot about him a lot today, obviously. Johnny Dawkins, we saw him a lot this year he also is one of the best he was held to four the other night by north carolina state i look for him to break loose he's loaded with talent he's going to be guarding price what a matchup and they may be as you say kevin the best two in the country it should be a terrific matchup all right we're all set to see it from cameron indoor arena in durham north carolina georgia tech against duke I'm Vic Braden, and I have a great bargain from Tennis, the world's foremost tennis magazine. It's the magazine that guides you, it keeps you up to date, it helps you enjoy and improve. And you'll find articles and answers to many questions about the game in Tennis Magazine. So take advantage of a better than half price offer. Nine monthly issues of this great magazine for only $5. You won't find that at your newsstand. So call now, toll free, and when you call today, you'll also get free five constructive booklets that are sure to improve your game. Just look at what you get. Five booklets plus nine monthly issues of tennis for only $5. That's less than 56 cents a copy. Now compare that with the basic subscription price of a dollar and the regular newsstand price of $1.75 and you'll see what a great value you're getting. So don't miss out. Just call toll free 1-800-453-9000. That's 1-800-453-9000. And if you read everything between these covers, you are going to be famous by Friday. For 1983, Plymouth is making Made in America mean something again. Quality, durability, and value. It means a complete American car with 13 more standard features than last year, but comparably equipped at $626 less. It means high mileage and quality. It means Plymouth backs horizon with five years or 50,000 miles protection. Hard proof. Plymouth is the American way to get your money's worth. Ooh. Plymouth offers 11.9% financing on all new 82 and 83 models. Welcome back to the Cameron Indoor Stadium on the campus of Duke University. We are going to take a look at the starting lineups for today's matchup. The Yellow Jackets from Atlanta and Georgia Tech. John Sally, number 22, will open up. He will play at one of the forward spots. Danny Pearson, number 33, will play alongside him at 6'7 and 2'10. In the pivot, it'll be Big Tim Harvey, number 44, 6'10, 240 pounder. George Thomas, number 15, will be in one of the guard spots, the 6'3", 180 pounder. And the man that everybody has to watch today, the leading scorer in the ACC, freshman Mark Price out of Oklahoma. For the Blue Devils of Duke, their starting five will also include four freshmen. David Henderson is one of them. Henderson, the 6'5", 195 pound forward. 
He'll be joined at the forward spot by Jay Billis, a 6'8", 215-pounder, also a freshman, wearing number 21. A freshman in the pivot, Mark Allery, 6'8", 195-pounder. Johnny Dawkins, the freshman guard, watch for the battle between he and Price this afternoon. And Chip England, the lone non-freshman in the Duke starting lineup, will play at the other guard, and he's really been hot lately, averaging better than 17 points over his last seven or eight games. So Georgia Tech battling Duke. Earlier today, we were able to creep into the Georgia Tech locker room and listen to head coach Bobby Kremens give his team some pregame motivation. Number one, this is a tough place to play. And the fans are tough, you know, when everybody behaves themselves. That's class. That's the most important thing. If they can on you, all you will concentrate on is the game. And uh, they'll be sitting right behind our bench. Concentrate on the game. That's the important thing. Personnel-wise, now look, you know England's a great shooter. He can really shoot the ball. Also, Emma, who comes off the bench, either one of them come in there. Whatever defense we're in, whether we're in man or in the zone, I want you to key on them. Now, Dawkins is a great penetrator. He loves to penetrate, but he can also shoot the jumper. Now, I think he got a good, a good taste of him in the Coliseum, and hopefully that taste will do you good. Now, George, he'll do the job. He did a super job on Branch. I think uh, Branch missed some shots, but you contained him. You took away his penetration, and that's the key to this young man here. You have to take away his penetration. If you go for the basketball, he will go by it. Use your head. Stop his penetration, and once he shoots the basketball, then you go contest the shot. That takes a lot of heart to do that, and a lot of brain, but that's what you have to do to win the basketball game. Okay. All right, I hope you enjoyed that little visit with Bobby Crimmins in the Georgia Tech locker room. Here's a look at the referees today. Joe Forte will be the referee. Dave Paparo and Bob Taylor will join him as the other two officials for this afternoon's matchup. Kevin Slayton and John Andres, hope you enjoy the basketball game. Duke in white and Georgia Tech in the black uniforms. And the freshman Price, John, is able to control the first tip. Georgia Tech has uh, one main thing to overcome in this game today, Kevin. They have not won a game yet on the road this year, as unbelievable as that sounds. They are 0-11, and they get the first bucket of the game. Danny Pearson driving the lane, and it's 2-0. Georgia Tech in front. They won the previous meeting between the two teams this year in Atlanta, 67-66. to That was a good ball game. This is Dawkins, the freshman we were talking about. That's England, the senior. The lob inside to Billis, and it's blocked, knocked away. And Billis fights for it, still has it, goes up, can't score, but a whistle. And it looks like it may go against Duke. And it's against Billis for blocking out. Well, you got to credit that Yellow Jacket defense for getting in there and working real hard. Big guys all converged on Billis and made it impossible, and he got very frustrated. Harvey was the player that blocked the first attempt by Billis. And Billis able to come up with a loose ball, but not able to convert. Georgia Tech now on the attack. They lead it 2 nothing, just underway here in Durham. Inside they go to Harvey. He walked with it. A big monster inside. 6'10", 240-pound freshman. The only non-freshman in the Georgia Tech starting lineup is the guard, George Thomas. We told you about that last meeting earlier this season, a one-point victory. In that game, John Dawkins had a shot at winning it. He had the last shot from about 12 to 15 feet, couldn't convert it. You see Duke going inside to their big guys right away. Phillips in command, but he decides to pass it up. This is Dawkins, his first shot of the game. And it goes out of bounds, belongs to Duke. I think Thomas got a hand on it. George Thomas did a good job. The uh, reference before by Coach Bobby Kremens to the job he did against Maryland's Adrian Branch last uh, earlier this week. Four points he held Branch to. George Thomas at 6'3 uh, can really play defense. Well, the, the officials changed their decision and give the ball to Georgia Tech. So Thomas out on the point now, tries to get it inside. Does so nicely to Sally. His jumper won't go, and Henderson clears it away for Duke. The Blue Devils come out running. They still trail 2-0, and Dawkins trying to tie it up. England inside with a nice rebound, and he can't hit it. And the rebound to Allery, and he gets the basket. Big Mark Allery at 6'8", going over 6'10", Tim Harvey from behind and getting that rebound and converting. Allery, uh, Allery had a good game against Tech the last time they played. 19 points, 13 rebounds. He is the inside force for Duke. And the whistle inside goes against Harvey of Georgia Tech. 
Mark Price, the high-scoring guard for Georgia Tech, hasn't gotten a shot yet. We have to watch Johnny Dawkins on him. He's the guy matched up against him today. Bobby Grimmins, a Yankee Doodle Dandy, born on the 4th of July and married on the 4th of July. They don't play basketball in the summer, though, not in July, so he, he's not going to have any memorable victories on the 4th of July. I got to tell you, though, Kevin, he, play, he played a lot of basketball himself in New York on the 4th of July, I bet. That's where he's from. England inside to Allery with the left hand. That won't go. Dawkins with a nice rebound, and Thomas got him from behind. Dawkins can get inside and rebound. So can Price, both very good rebounding guards. But George Thomas is the number one guard of the ACC, John, as a rebounder. So we've got some leaping guards out there this afternoon. Anglin lobs it out to Dawkins. Of course, the 30-second rule and the three-point rule, in effect, in ACC competition. His own defense on the inbounds play. Prior to that, it's been man-to-man. -man. Allery gets his second basket of the game, and he has four points. Four to two, Duke leads it. Three minutes into the battle, and this is Price now, and that's the first or second time he's even handled the ball. Much less taking oh, the shot. Oh, what a pass. Harvey jams it home and gives Sally the credit for the pass. But what a fine lead pass also by Price. Just perfect into uh, Sally. Henderson now passes up the shot. There's Dawkins. You heard Bobby Kremens talk about how he can penetrate, and he came bursting down the lane. Duke by two, and still Price has not taken a shot. You know, he was the leading player. Now a three-point effort, and Woo! bingo, can he shoot the basketball? You know, he hardly looked at that rim, Kevin. He just went right up as if he knew exactly where he was without looking at the basket. We, uh, the point I was going to make, he was the leading player, the MVP in the state of Oklahoma last year. That means he went over a guy named Tisdale. Oh! Look at Dawkins get up high. <laughs> They say he's 6'2", but when you stand next to him, he appears shorter. But he became 6'10 on that play. Boy, did that light up the place, huh? Well, here is Sally at the other end, trying to pass it inside with the turnover taken away by Henderson. And here comes Dawkins. Mike Krzyzewski, the Duke coach, was talking about his jumping ability. He said he could get his elbows above the rim, John. I couldn't believe that when I asked Mike before. He said how high he could jump. He said elbows. That's high. That's the stratosphere. The whistle goes against Georgia Tech, and I believe it's going to go against Danny Pearson, who gives the official a little pat on the backside. Pearson draws the foul, his first. Well, they haven't calmed down here in Durham yet since that jam by Dawkins a moment ago. Allery is pretty much a sure thing from the free throw line, an 82% shooter from the charity stripe over the course of the season. Just a freshman. He does everything well. Fundamentally sound player. Maurice Bradford checks into the game for Georgia Tech. He'll wear number 35. And Allery converts both free throws. So Allery now has six points in the game. Duke has a 10 to 7 lead, and we've got a timeout in Durham, North Carolina, here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. And we'll come back for more ACC action in a moment. What'll it be? Sports questions. You're on, Ace. Shoot. Lowest NBA score ever. Pistons 19, Lakers 18. Nice. Now the 1982 NFC number three offense. Lying. Wrong. Rams. Number three AFC defense. Chiefs. Uh-uh. Jets. Well, I guess 82 is in my forte. Well, <laughs> you better hit the books. What? The ESPN Sports Almanac? I need this, right? That's over 200 pages covering 25 different sports. Pro, college, amateur. And nice photos. Facts and figures, too. For all of 1982, including the Miami-Washington Super Bowl. Hey, how do we get this? Send your check and money order for $3.95 plus a dollar postage and handling to ESPN Almanac, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28230. Or call toll-free 1-800-544-1000 and charge it to your Visa or MasterCard. 1-800-544-1000. Got it. Now nah, have one on me. The greatest college basketball schedule ever rates at 10 Wednesdays and Saturdays on your Total Sports Network. 
we're talking about action-packed Big Ten basketball. And it comes your way twice a week with a hard-nosed style of play made famous by the likes of Bobby Knight and his high-flying Indiana Hoosiers. Basketball gets physical when the Big Ten comes to town. And we've got it Wednesdays and Saturdays here on ESPN, home of the greatest college basketball schedule ever. When you have reading skills, it's hard to understand what it's like to be unable to read. This is what a stop sign looks like to one in five adults who cannot read. Literacy Volunteers of America has a one-on-one -on -one tutoring program to help teach reading. Become a volunteer. You discover that you get more than you give when you teach another to read. I'm Wally Amos asking you to help stop illiteracy. Please write Literacy Volunteers of America. We are back live at Cameron Indoor Stadium in Durham, North Carolina, on the campus of Duke University. Kevin Slayton, along with John Andrews. Glad you're with us. Right now, Duke leads Georgia Tech 10-7. And watch Johnny Dawkins. Well, Johnny Dawkins got in front of uh, Thomas, and you can see how high he gets off the ground. What a perfect pass right on the money. Dawkins got his forearms up there over the basket. What a thrill <laughs> that must be to do that. What a great play that was. And that was David Henderson delivering that pass. Dawkins is just 6-2 to get up that high. Mike Krzyzewski, the Duke coach. 10-7, Duke leads it. 15-46 left in the first half, and they're standing here in Durham, the student section. They've been excited ever since Dawkins jammed that baby in there. Georgia Tech on the attack. Inside to Sally on the baseline. It won't go, and Allery clears it for Duke. No second shots for Georgia Tech. Anglin, triple crown after bingo! England's been getting better and better as the season wears on now. 13-7 down at the other end. That's going to be a walk. Pearson took one too many steps. And it'll belong to Duke. David Henderson was lucky. He let Pearson get inside him. He was watching the ball and not his man. And Pearson got away from him. Duke has yet to turn the ball over. And, John, we've had the, the Blue Devils here on ESPN the last couple of weeks, and that's been one of their problems. They have turned it over quite a bit. Not so in the first five minutes of this one. Henderson with a nice move, almost loses the ball. And now gets it out to Anglin. He's the senior playing with four freshmen. Look at Allery make himself available. He scores, and he commits the foul. And I don't think the basket will count. Good pass by Henderson, too. He got him in right position. Led him perfectly right through his opening. Tough call. Allery on an offensive foul. The basket does not count. It remains a six-point Duke lead at 13-7, and the hometown folks don't like it a bit. Price lets it go. He's unbelievable. Out of sight. Out of sight. That's a freshman, folks. The highest scorer in the ACC. He is a freshman. He's taken two shots, both triple crown efforts, three-pointers, and he's hit both of them. And they've been bombs. Allery, he banks it off the glass. He's got eight. Well, as we mentioned at the outset, both teams starting four freshmen. So what a future Duke and Georgia Tech has when you consider the ability of these young men. Eight out of the ten players that started freshmen. Unbelievable. 15 to 10. Duke is leading it. Georgia Tech beat them by one in Atlanta. Tech comes into this game at 12 and 12. Pearson the jumper as he drives the lane. Danny Pearson at 6'5", plays forward most of the time, but his, uh, he's very versatile, and he shot from a guard position there. Great move, Henderson, and it goes for him. Dawkins made a spinning move, John, and then was able to feed it off. And if you remember what Bobby Crimmins said in the locker room, Dawkins is a great penetrator, and he showed you just that there. Here's Price, makes the move. Dawkins blocks it, and England finds him with the long lead. Watch him get up there. That'll be a goal, Ted, by Thomas. Fine lead pass. Nice little head fake, too. Price showed some variety on that play. England just threw the ball to the position, and he, he knows the speed that Dawkins has. It was really a great pass. A 7-point, 19-12 Duke lead with 13 and a half minutes left in the first half. Dawkins doesn't want Price to beat him on the drive. He's down real low guarding him. Price had 13 against Duke the first time they met. Here's Thomas, and he bangs it in. It's a five-point lead, and Thomas has his first points of the game. 
The only senior in that starting lineup for Georgia Tech, George Thomas. Both teams are lighting it up pretty well so far. You saw those early percentages as Anderson drives the lane and draws the foul. It's whistle against John Sally. Now that is his first. Todd Anderson. He's just a sophomore. Emma now checks into the game for Duke. And he replaces England. Tom Emma is a senior out of Manhasset, New York. Duke, a very excellent free throw shooting team, John, on the season. They hit better than 70%, 74% of their free throws. That's excellent shooting. A lot of professional teams do not shoot 75%. And most of the players, as we've mentioned, are underclassmen, freshmen, sophomores. Very cool in the line. Seven point lead for Duke now, 21 14, Georgia Tech in command. Inside move, and he gets the easy bucket. Sally with his first basket of the game. Kevin Slayton and John Andrews, glad you're with us here in Durham, North Carolina at the Cameron Indoor Stadium. In many ways, John Sally is the key to Georgia Tech in this game. People know that Price is going to get his points, but for a big effort to break that horrendous road winning situation for Georgia Tech, they haven't won on the road. Sally has to have a good, solid game. Emma with the three-point bucket. It's an eight-point lead now at 24-16, and we haven't seen a three-pointer miss the mark yet, John. This foul will go against Duke and Anderson. Bobby Kremens stalking the Georgia Tech sideline. Duke defense is continuing to overplay inside. In other words, the defensive men underneath the basket are stepping in front of the Georgia Tech offensive players, which means that the weak side forward, the side away from the ball, defense-wise, has to come over and help on those lead passes, and Duke has been doing a good job at that. Maurice Bradford takes a rest for Georgia Tech. Anthony Bird is in there for him. Nice play by Thomas to save it. And Georgia St Tech still controls that. Sally in the lane. He's tough in there, but he misses an Allery with an exclamation point, grabs the rebound. Emma moves nicely down the lane, but Sally knocks it away. Bird picked it up, and Emma draws the foul. So Duke with an eight-point lead. And both teams have got four team fouls. And we've got a timeout on the floor. Duke leads it 24-16. And we'll come back to Durham, North Carolina for more basketball in a moment. Look, if you rip this expensive car seat, you'd have to mend it with tape. But when new car manufacturers mend rips on the assembly line, they look like this, good as new. Now, you can use the same fabulous process at home. New Minute Mender makes almost invisible repairs quickly, easily on vinyl and leather and fabric. Repairs furniture, handbags, luggage, coats, and much more. Just match, patch, and blend. Mend rips, holes, cigarette burns in any color vinyl or leather as easily as waving a wand. Just match, patch, and blend. Watch this actual demonstration. The rip in this expensive luggage looks hopeless, but wait, just match the color, Patch with amazing Minute Mender. Then blend in the grain and look. A perfect repair. Imagine from this to this in minute. Watch again. Here's an ugly cigarette burn. On the left is old-fashioned vinyl repair tape. On the right, Minute Mender. Let's go. Minutes later, both holes are fixed, but the tape patch looks terrible. With Minute Mender, you can find the repair, just like new and look. It's strong as ever. Use Minute Mender on car seats, vinyl tops, furniture, luggage, boots, jackets, toys, rafts, briefcases, glass cases, and dozens of other things. It even repairs the most expensive Naga hide and leather. The Minute Mender kit contains everything you need to make hundreds of dollars worth of instant at-home repairs. Minute Mender, just $12.95 with an absolute money-back guarantee. Act now, and we'll include free this valuable fabric repair kit. Makes almost invisible repairs on jackets, curtains, clothing of all kinds, and you never thread a needle. The Fabric Repair Kit, yours free with amazing Minute Mender. Don't wait. Call now for rush delivery. Here's how to order. Call toll-free, 1-800-554-9000. That's 1-800-554-9000. Or send $12.95 plus $3 shipping and handling to Minute Mender. Box 213, Plainville, Connecticut, 06062. Or call toll-free, 1-800-554-9000. That's 1-800-554-9000.
Welcome back to Durham, North Carolina. We've got an ACC basketball doubleheader for you tomorrow afternoon. North Carolina State is at Virginia. 2 Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific time live. Then Clemson and North Carolina. I'll be there for that one. 4 Eastern time, 1 Pacific time, also live here on ESPN. You know, John, a very interesting statistic. The first uh, three years in the ACC, Georgia Tech was 4-38 and 38 in conference games. And this year alone, Bobby Cremens has been able to win four. He's 4-8 four and eight this year. So Bobby Cremens has had a definite positive effect on the school. Six points apiece for Dawkins and Price uh, in the early going. Price, of course, knocking home those two long-range bombs. Both three-pointers. Cremens in only his second year, Kevin, uh, is a good salesman also for Georgia Tech. He's going to bring in some fine players in the next couple of years. 24-16, Duke leads it. They've got the ball, 11 and a half minutes left, first half. There's Dawkins coming from behind again. He couldn't jam that one, John, but he well, got it nonetheless. He got behind Mark Price. Duke is not afraid to throw cross-court passes, and Georgia Tech better realize that. Usually you don't do that. If the defense anticipates what the offense is going to think, what, what they think they should do, they, they're going to get in trouble. Price has been pretty quiet as you see the big move and an offensive foul called against Pearson. He made a nice move and threw his weight around in there, but unfortunately for him, he threw an offensive foul. Danny Pearson at 6'5", just forced that move a little too much. Tom Emma anticipated it perfectly. And Pearson is going to get a rest and into the game for Georgia Tech. It's Tim Harvey, big number 44. I tell you, when he patrols the pivot, you can hear him. You know he's there. 6'10", 240. They don't come much bigger than that. And he and Allery are really having a physical tussle inside right now. Anderson along the baseline. Nice move. Drives all the way to the bucket. It won't go. Allery had it. He lost it, and it was touched last by Harvey, so Duke retains possession. Allery kept working for position, and he, the ball came right into his hands and was slapped away, but he keeps going to those boards well. A 10-point Duke lead. That's their largest of the game so far, 26-16. Looking at a zone defense now by Tech on that inbounds play. Allery had a thought to go for the shot, but he passed it up. Nice move by Dawkins. Gets way out there and hits the 15-footer. Notice how the great offensive players always seem to be free when they take their shot, and that's because of what they do immediately preceding it. Dawkins is so quick, and he faked his way to that fine position. Dawkins with 10 points leads the way now for Duke as Georgia Tech needs a timeout. Duke holds a 12-point lead, and when we return to Durham, North Carolina, we'll pick it up there. Duke leads it 28-16. to 16. ESPN is in your corner Thursday with another rugged evening of top-ranked boxing. Power-punching well-await Bobby Joe Young squares off the Jose Luis Vallejo in the 10-round main event. Live from Ambridge, Pennsylvania, it's Top Rank Boxing, Thursday on ESPN. Sunday, ESPN goes west for a double-barreled NBA shootout. Jack Sickman and the Seattle Supersonics tip it off against Utah and all that jazz. Then the world champion LA Lakers look to steal a win from the high-scoring Denver Nuggets. It's all live Sunday on ESPN. Thursday, catch a live SEC showdown. Dirk Minifield and the Kentucky Wildcats look to reach new heights when they meet the Ole Miss Rebels. Get into the action. Maybe you'll solve the mystery. Find out what the B stands for Thursday on your Total Sports Network. Born of tradition. Nurtured by pride. Budweiser Life with a clean, distinctive taste. A light beer worthy of the king of beers. Bring out your best. Bring out your best. The best never comes easy. That's why there's nothing else like it. Welcome back to Cameron Indoor Stadium on the campus of Duke University. And we've got the NBA for you tomorrow. Doubleheader action. 6.50 p.m. Eastern Time, 3.50 Pacific Time, Utah against Seattle, that one's live. Then Denver at Los Angeles, 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific Time, that one also live. Kevin Slate along with John Andrews. John, you know a little bit about the NBA. <laughs> a little bit. Every Sunday night I 
try and keep up with it with Greg Gumbel in our NBA Tonight Show. Only on ESPN. John, as we look at this one, a 12-point lead right now for Duke, and you can see the current statistics. Both teams are shooting well, but Georgia Tech has not been able to get the ball to their big gun. The guy with it right now, Mark Price. Well, he's been very unselfish giving the ball up, and they seem to be going inside. Dawkins blocks it again. And great play, great they, play. They were listening to you, but they didn't count on Dawkins blocking it. Well, he's having his best game that I've been able to see, and I've seen him three times. He's just all over, doing everything well. Emma, or England, I should say, on the nice drive, and he hits the shot. Well, Duke is really relaxed now, and they are blowing this game open very early, 30 to 16. Wow. It's an interesting contrast to the game they had a week ago that we did, John, against Wake Forest. Wake Forest, a veteran team, had a nice move to the hoop by Sally, and he jams it in there. He's got four points. But it appears that Duke, freshman-oriented, playing a lot more relaxed, as you said, than they were, of course, last week against Wake Forest, which is a little bit more intimidating. They're a veteran team. And a foul after the rebound committed by Billis. Those are the kind that uh, you don't like to see if you're a coach. Kevin, as we said earlier, uh, earlier this week, when uh, Duke played Maryland, Take a look at John Sally now getting that position for a moment. Working well inside. Little head fake. Nice move there. Earlier the week when uh, Duke went up against Maryland, uh, Dawkins was held to four points in that game. And as, as we said earlier, we had the feeling that he'd come out here today and really work that extra harder. And it's sh certainly showing in the first half. He's already got 10 of his team's 30 points. Now he was one of nine from the field in that game. And that's just not like Dawkins. Thomas with a nice move, and he feeds it off. 30 to 18, Duke in the lead. Price, another three-point bomb. He forced that one, John. I just referred to a game against Maryland. That was Carolina State that did the good job on Dawkins. Uh, they really worked hard on him. And it was Georgia Tech knocking off Maryland. They also beat Wake Forest this season. So they've beaten some good teams. But just like Duke, they've had that inconsistency that freshmen will sometimes have. And the foul inside is whistled against Dawkins. But you know, the foundation is here, Kevin, for both of these teams to go from a, a, a lower portion in the ACC this year to top 20 potential next year with the, with the kind of talent that Kremens uh, and, and Krzyzewski have brought to their respective schools. And from what we hear, what they're bringing in next year. They could just go immediately right around. You can hear the crowd chanting air ball in reference to the last time Price put one up. Sally, a nice shot off the glass. And he's got six now to lead Georgia Tech along with Price, who has six. Sally is going to the basket. He's not taking ball away shots. And for the freshman, uh, that's very important. He's starting to help his team now in a big way. Anderson couldn't get the shot down or check and make it Allery and a nice rebound by Sally. And here come the Yellow Jackets. They turn it over, but the foul is whistled and it's going to go against Anderson. Well, I'll tell you, Duke does not want to give the passes up inside. They challenge every inside pass. That's the way to play defense. Duke calls the timeout. They've got a 10 point lead at 30 to 20. And if Georgia Tech can get a run of points here, we may be right back in the ball game. 8-14 left in the first half. You don't have to put up with hotel excuses like the maid, the TV man, or the plumber is gone for the day. Because Holiday Inn gives you this no excuses guarantee. Everything in your room will be right, or will make it right. No excuses. Or that night, you stay free. You don't get this guarantee from any other hotel chain. Not one. So, let us take care of you. Holiday Inn gives you a guarantee. Not excuses. For 1983, Plymouth is making Made in America mean something again. Quality and durability, many vital parts and functions of Reliant K are computer designed. Precision assembled, it means the highest mileage six passenger front wheel drive car in America. And the lowest priced, it means five years or 50,000 miles protection. Hard proof, Plymouth is the American way to get your money's worth. Plymouth offers 11.9% financing on all new 82 and 83 models. Paul Bear 
Bryant, the winning tradition of one man captured for you forever. There is college football's winningest coach, over 315 victories. He shared his magic formula with many athletes. Now you can share his magic. This book, Bama and the Bear, is for anyone who respects and loves the bear. It's all in this book. He coached greats like Ken Stabler and Joe Namath. The price is $39.95 for cloth binding. The collector's edition is $69.95. It's leather bound and has Bear's personal autograph. Call now and order. 800-544-2000. This is the pre-publication price and includes play-by-play -play recaps of the thrilling 81 season and the exciting 82 season. You'll also get this recording, The Bear Remembers. Your book will be shipped in February after the end of the season. Hurry, it's a limited edition. These editions will never be sold in bookstores. Act now. The Bear would want it that way. We are back live, Durham, North Carolina, the Cameron Indoor Stadium on the campus of Duke University. Some track coming your way on ESPN, the Vitalis U.S. Olympic Invitational Track Meet, Monday, February 28th, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 Pacific time from the Meadowlands, the Brendan Byrne Arena in East Rutherford, New Jersey. That should be a great one. Some of the great competitors in the track and field wars, Alberto Salazar, Willie Gall, all on hand for you on ESPN. The one and one is now in effect for Georgia Tech, and Sally knocks down the first end of it. Remember, Wake Forest and Maryland, another ACC battle, will come your way on ESPN later today following this game. And Sally hits both of the free throws, and that could be a very important factor as we still have 8-14 left in the first half. And now some, some pressure applied by Georgia Tech. The foul whistle against Pearson. And that's his second. Very dangerous to try and stop a man from behind, and that's what Pearson did, and the officials certainly picked that up fast. John, do you like the tactic employed now by Tech with the full court pressure with a guy like Dawkins who can break it in a hurry? Oh, he's the man. Pearson goes out of the game now. And they're able to get it in. Anderson nearly walked with it after he took the inbounds pass. An eight-point Duke lead. England working on Price in a man-to-man -man situation. And we've got some real physical contact underneath, and the whistle's going to go against Todd Anderson, and that's his third foul for the big Duke forward. I like John Sally, the man you're looking at, fighting over that pick. And the pick was a moving pick, and Sally hit the dirt real fast, hit the ground, and... Uh, he knew he was going to get clobbered, but he, uh, he he was devoted to defense on that play. A terrific, fine play by Sally, who's now going to get a chance to earn some points at the line. He just made his last two. He has not shot fouls well this year, a little under 60%. Mahar comes into the game for Duke, number 45. He replaces Anderson, who committed that foul. Well, let's see if Sally can knock two more down. That was a brick. And they get a break because the rebound is pulled down nicely by Bird. An eight-point lead, and Georgia Tech could cut into that. The pass inside, but a fine defensive play by Mahar. He went to the court to knock that one away. Henderson along the baseline passes up the shot. Looking for that cross-court pass again, John. It wasn't there that time. Bradford at 6'4", is guarding the 6'8-inch gallery underneath, so Duke is trying to get it into him. Mahar from in close couldn't hit it but look at Henderson get up get the rebound and he scores David Henderson playing bigger than 6-5 a 10 point Duke lead at 32 22 with seven minutes left in the first half they've got to get price shooting the ball they're setting up a double pick down low now John in order to free him he was free that time but Thomas put it down low to Sally on the other side of the lane I believe he's taken, what, three shots so far in the first half and hit two, four? And the other two were blocked. Bird from the baseline, a nice Anthony touch. Bird. That's his first basket of the game. He's now got two points, and it's an eight-point Duke lead. Well, Bird is maybe the best shooter on this team from all reports, so let's see if he can continue. Sally knocking it out of bounds, and it belongs to the Blue Devils. Get on pick. A long lob for Mahar. He got it and now loses it, but the foul is called against Bird. 
Well, how in the world do you get a long pass cross court off an inbounds play like that? Boy, Duke has been throwing those court, court, cross court passes continually in the first half. Danny Mahar going to get this pass from England now. Mahar at 6 7, the big sophomore got the ball, and that head fake helped him get some contact. They just look like they're sleeping. It looked like really the foul was committed by George Thomas, but it was whistled against Byrne. And well, Mahar misses. Georgia Tech cannot slough off now and help on defense as much as they have been because the players that are sloughing on defense have been victims. The cross-court passes have been finding their way to the open men. Mahar hits the second one. That's his first point of the game, and it's a nine-point Duke Lee with 6.44 left in the first half. Price has been bringing the ball down, John, but he's given it up in a hurry. Inside to Sally, he's got two men immediately on him. An ill-advised pass, and Allery is there to pick it off. Well, you don't get fancy when you're down nine. England, a triple crown effort, won't go. Tipped away, and here they come. Bradford running with Price. Feeds it off nicely, and he misses the layup. And look at the rebound by Allery. Well, that was a tough miss. Duke with a nine-point lead in the basketball. Six minutes left now in the first half. England, when he gets open, he's ready to shoot it. Nice job by Allery of getting position, and then he drew the foul on Sally. And now Duke will get into the bonus situation as well from the free throw line. Here's another look, John. Bradford, 35, trying to get in front of Allery, but hey, he's four inches bigger, and Allery's got great position under the basket. And of course, he was met by the by the helping defense there, Tom, uh, who was that that came across? 22 that was. That was the Sally that came across, but he got there a little too late. But that's a tough matchup inside. Allery at 6'8", and he's pretty wide, too. Harvey is back into the game now for Georgia Tech. Allery at the line. He'll kill you from the line. He's not the guy to foul. Three for three today from the line, an 82% around the season. He's got nine points now. Big game the other night against Carolina State. 20 points for Allery. He's got 10. So does Dawkins. They lead Duke, and Duke leads Georgia Tech by 11. Man-to-man -man defense all the way for Duke first half. Nice move along the baseline by Thomas, but his pass goes off the hand of Bradford. Dawkins trying to do it all alone, and he does it, and he draws a foul. Or did he commit the foul? Might be a little of both there. Might have, field goal might have counted. And he committed the foul. Tough defense causing another turnover for Duke. You see Johnny Dawkins. Price almost got it away from him, but Dawkins with those great hands got it in off the backboard and then committed the uh, charging foul. And Bird will go to the line for Georgia Tech. 12 for Dawkins, and he Put those leads. Arms. Duke now. He's got some on. There's Krzyzewski, the Duke coach. In his third year at the helm here in Durham. Bird with the one and one, and he rolls it in. Bird has three points. He's an 80% free throw shooter, so. Second high score on the Georgia Tech team last year behind Brooks Steppe, who's now in the NBA with Kansas City. Bird cuts it to 11, the lead for Duke. 5.33 left in the first half. Dawkins having himself a great game, 12 points. The season high is 31. Anglin thought about it, then made the move. Henderson open along the baseline. It won't go, and Thomas with a great rebound, but he's going to be called for a foul. Boy, can he get off the ground. George Thomas, great leaping ability, going to come in now and rebound this uh, shot attempt by Henderson. Leading rebounder in the ACC for guards, George Thomas. He must have been pushing before the rebound because it certainly didn't appear that he fouled. Anybody. Mahar misses the first end of the one and one at Bird with a nice rebound. An 11 point Duke lead, but Georgia Tech could cut it to nine. Maybe eight if Price decides to gun. There he goes. <laughs> a little bit short. Harvey comes away with a rebound, and he walked. And that's the third time Georgia Tech has turned the ball over when one of their players has walked in open territory. Not even any pressure, really. 
I would think that uh, Mike Krzyzewski has to be very happy with the job that Johnny Dawkins is doing on on Price. Price showing his frustration by taking a shot I thought last time just a little bit out of his range and uh, it's going to be very hard for Dawkins to uh, uh, for Price rather to get going here. Williams has just got in the game. He's one of the crowd favorites and he knocks down the bucket. Weldon Williams makes it a 13 point two play. The last time these two teams met, Price was held to 13. I say held because his average is 19. And now Henderson takes it away. Georgia Tech loses it out of bounds, and they're doing a job on Price. Well, they're sure keying on him. Anytime Price has the ball, Dawkins is going to have help, and it's just working perfectly for them in the first half. And he's going to get himself a rest. Price comes out of the ball game, and in there. They'll have someone else come into the game. Four twenty-eight left. Dawkins in command. Inside to Williams. He hit a moment ago. Long cross-court pass. They're fortunate to come up with that one. And it's time Williams walks. So it'll belong to Georgia Tech. Four thirteen left, first half. Bradford outside doesn't want the shot. Bird, who's been pretty quiet. Thomas, nice move. He got open, didn't take the shot. And now a whistle. And a officials time out because it looked like Bradford turned an ankle. Or not, it's not going to be Bradford, it's Thomas. Thomas number 15, Bradford number 35. Here's another look. Let's see if we can pick it up, John. George Thomas. Uh, there he is. That's an odd one, isn't it? He was all by himself. He might have extended uh, uh, a hamstring, perhaps. I don't know if it was an ankle. It didn't appear that he twisted his ankle. Whatever it is, he must have done it when he uh, looked to me like a hamstring. Move. He just stretched it a little too far, the back of his uh, thigh muscle. The officials very quickly spotting it and stopping the play. The ball will still belong to Georgia Tech. That is not an easy one to shake off. Could be the knee. We just don't know at this point. 12 seconds remain on the shot clock. Price comes back in, greeted to cheers of air ball after he <laughs> fired the one up before. Oh, four years of this matchup between Dawkins and Price, and this is the first year. Wow. You can see what the freshmen have done for both teams. Of course, both lineups dominated by freshmen. 13 point Duke lead. I like that little rest Kremens gave him, too. He didn't leave him for the rest of the half to uh, get too cold. He just gave him a minute blow and let him get his act together. Well, Georgia Tech came out hot, but they have not continued the pace. Bradford whistled for the foul. Georgia Tech's shooting has gone awry. It seems every time Duke comes down court, Kevin, they get something. You know, it doesn't appear that they're in that frustrating situation where they keep coming here. You can see Dawkins getting rid of the ball, moving it up, always getting, pushing the ball forward. That's why Dawkins is so tough. No chance at an offensive foul on that play. Bradford tried to draw the offensive foul, but it didn't work. Henderson will go to the line, a 67% free throw shooter on the season. Four points today, one and one. An interesting statistic here for the first half. Duke's freshmen are leading Georgia Tech's freshmen by the score of 28 to 22. Not often you can say that freshmen have played that major of a role in a game. Henderson hits both ends of the one and one, and he has six. Duke has their largest lead, 15 points, 41 to 26. This is the man that has to be shooting more, Mark Price. Leading scorer in the ACC. Three and a half minutes left in the first half now. And they give it away again. This time they stole it from Mansell. Henderson thought England was with him. And they call a foul against Henderson, an offensive foul. That is his first foul. 
So Georgia Tech will have the ball, and John, we keep alluding to it, and Price just hasn't been able to get the shot. Well, it'll be interesting to see what Bobby Kremens comes up with in the second half. Maybe Price has to get some picks. It doesn't appear that anyone is really helping him get free. It's sort of doing it all by himself. Well, the one time they came down the floor, they set up the double pick down, on, down low, but they threw the ball to the other side. So Price broke free on that particular time down the floor, but they didn't get him the ball. He's also going into that low pivot position. I don't see that as a percentage situation. He's six feet tall. Dawkins is 6'2 with long arms, and it's very hard for him to succeed with his back to the basket at six feet. Mansell, the trigger man, and Dawkins has just picked up his third foul. That could be important. He's got 12 points, and he's done a great defensive job, but he's now got three fouls, and you're going to see him come out of the ballgame. Emma's going to come in with three minutes left in the half. You don't want to take a risk. No, that's very key. Huh? That's very key. You don't want him with three in the first half at all, because once you get four, for many players, they tune out of the game then, and they get so cautious. And a freewheeling, free spirit like Dawkins uh, can be greatly inhibited with four fouls, and he's got three now, so that's the end of him for the first half. And Bradford's able to knock down the front end of the one and one It's going to be interesting to see how Emma now does guarding Price, although the last time they played when Price was held at 13 points, Dawkins and Emma shared the defensive duties. And Bradford hits both. He's just a 57% free throw shooter. It looked like a 90% of that time. Bradford has memories of shooting here, I'll tell you. We'll get into that a little bit later at the foul line. Emma had a notion, gets it into Ellery. Oh. That's an easy bucket. He Sim can move his body so well inside. So simple. Nice quick pass and right up. No dribbling. 12 points for Allery now. He and Dawkins leading all scores. 15 point lead again. Here is Price. And a foul goes against Emma. Looked like a good block, didn't it? And a technical gets called against Mike Krzyzewski on the Duke sideline. Oh, he must have said the magic word because there was no hesitation. Emma got the hand in on Price. Ball for the foul. Well, Price was six points. He ought to boost it up now. Guy leads the ACC in foul shooting. He drops that one easy enough. That's one of the quickest, te quickest technicals I've ever seen called. Price now has eight points, and he'll get a shot to add two more. Two shots for the technical foul. It's two for the foul now. Something? He went from six points in the first half <laughs> to nine, and now he's shooting for his tenth. Isn't that amazing? This a guy averages 20, leading scorer in the ACC, and you have the feeling that he's, he's just been totally shut out in the first half, and he's right on target. He's got ten points. And a chance for more because Georgia Tech will have the basketball. That's how you get back in the game. And he's got no Johnny Dawkins bothering him either. They were 15 down. They're 11 down. They bump in a three-pointer. You're looking at an eight-point deficit in one possession. A seven-point swing. Mansell can't hit the shot. And it comes away to Williams. Well, that's not the guy you'd want to take your shot. Mansell doesn't even, even play that much. Allery again makes himself available. He's so deadly with either hand, and he's got 14 points. Allery's a murderer inside. That was a big exchange. If Georgia Tech had been able to get the shot down at the other end, Harvey can't get it. Allery grabs the rebound. And Duke is certainly, and here's Williams all alone. An easy two, and he'll get a technical. Great feelings. Super stuff then hanging on the rim. No good. Not allowed. Well, here goes Price back to the free throw line. He's got 11 now, John. He's going to be one of the leading scorers. He's got five free throws and two three pointers. And they get the ball. Just a one shot technical. And it's a 14 point lead. Price moving. Woo! He had Emma all over him. Hawk Price, super move. He's 
He's got 13 points in the first half. Allery, a nice block by Harvey, and he gets the ball. Well, they need to score. A minute 18 left in the half. Enid, Oklahoma is very proud of this young man. Moving again. Oh, How does he man. hit the shots? And they call it offensive foul. Well, that was a tough call. What a great shot. He's the smoothest shooter I've seen all year long. Oh, absolutely. And Remember. He was a uh, high school player of the year in Oklahoma. And as we said earlier, there was a guy named Wayman Tisdale that also played his high school ball there last year. Great spinning move by Emma. It won't go, but Williams uh, Williams only been in there about four minutes. He's got six points. Weldon Williams, six foot six inch freshman. Go get him, Weldon. Price now with a long bomb. It won't go, and he hustles and gets oh. the rebound. A nice give and go, and Price hits it. Oh no! Offensive goaltending against Harvey. He just couldn't stop himself uh, once he got up there. What a frustrating play. Mark Price on the move. The ball is not out of the cylinder area, and Harvey interfered with it. Excellent call. Harvey was just up there. It was so hard for him to resist. Well, Mark and Price has certainly loosened up. Well, he was able to shake Dawkins. Greg Wilson in there now for Georgia Tech. 13 points for Price. He had six until Dawkins went out of the game. But, of course, five of those points have been scored on free throws. A 14-point lead for Duke. 20 seconds left first half. They've been able to do just about anything they've wanted, really. And now Emma with a long bomb draws nothing but air. Georgia Tech has the ball. Price better hurry. Six seconds left, and the clock's ticking away. Tries for the three-pointer. It won't go as the buzzer sounds, and the first half comes to an end. <laughs> Air ball. <laughs> and the fans let him have it, don't they? A 14-point Duke lead, 49-35 at halftime. And we'll be back to Durham, North Carolina, for more ACC basketball after this. Or 2000. Welcome back to Durham, North Carolina, the Cameron Indoor Stadium. Kevin Slayton along with John Andrews. We are at halftime. Duke leading Georgia Tech, 49-35. John, as we take a look at some of the halftime stats, anything that sticks out in your mind? Well, Duke uh, obviously shooting very well at 50, almost 58% from the field. They dominated on the boards. 17 to 9 rebounds for Georgia Tech. And the turnover situation also favored Duke. They only had seven, whereas Georgia Tech had 12. So Duke dominated the game in the first half, scoring and rebounding-wise. And of course, they were led by Mark Allery, 14 points and six rebounds. And at one point, uh, Duke had grabbed the first 10 rebounds of this game before Georgia Tech even grabbed a loose ball. United States Football League action, the Michigan Panthers, Birmingham Stallions, Monday, March 7th, 9 o'clock Eastern, 6 o'clock Pacific time, live. Jim Simpson and Paul McGuire on hand for the debut of the United States Football League here on ESPN. Mark Price, whom we said had been down in the first half with only six points most of the way, ended up that first half with 13 points, five of them coming from the free throw line. There's a good look at what's happened in the first half. 45-46% from the field for Georgia Tech's not really all that bad, but uh, Duke has really lit it up, shooting almost 60%. Dawkins had a terrific first half with his shooting, 6 for 8, and of course, Allery 5 of 8, so you're talking about 11 of 16 for those two guys who got 26 of the uh, team's 49 points. Sally has 8 points for Georgia Tech behind Price, but uh, Sally's been quiet for the last 10 minutes or so of the first half. Allery and Dawkins leading the way for Duke. And then Henderson and Williams, who doesn't play much, when he gets in the game, the crowd loves it. On alternating possessions, Duke has it here to start the second half. Allery and Dawkins playing a little one-two. Dawkins is in there. Anglin now makes the move, puts it up, and hits it. Tough shot. 
England shot that off his ear more than out in front of him. Only outstanding shooters can vary their delivery, and uh, you can see where he's certainly an outstanding shooter. Be interesting to see if Georgia Tech goes right at Johnny Dawkins, who's playing with three fouls. Here's their chance to do it. They don't do it. Harvey, he didn't know he had that much room, and he hits the turnarounder. Harvey now with four points. And Thomas, who went into the game to start the second half, is going to have to come back out. He injured that left leg near the end of the first half, and Anthony Bird goes in there to take his place. So it's Bird and Price at the guards. And in the pivot is Sally, and Harvey and Pearson are at the forwards for Georgia Tech. Anglin and Dawkins. Here's Anglin, a triple crown effort, and he bangs home the first five points of the second half for Duke. Well, Mark Price has got to stay up closer on England. He's guarding him, and he just can't leave him at any point because England can shoot from everywhere on the floor. Seeing two of the finest shooters of the ACC, if not the country, in England and Price. Nice pass from Price to Bird, but he hasn't taken away. It was out of bounds, belongs to Duke. Dawkins, as we take another look at it, Georgia Allard. Tech not able to convert inside and that challenging defense of Duke turned the ball over. Dawkins down at the other end hits the jumper and they've come out and hit three of their first uh, three shots and they have not been from close range. All have been difficult shots. How about Dawkins with that three still staying on the main man, Mark Price. Nice give and go to Sally and he jams it through for emphasis. Nice pass by Tim Harvey. 17 points is the lead for Duke. Henderson and Billis, the forwards with Allery in the pivot. Billis on a nice feed from Allery. Boy, what fine inside passing by both teams. Well, the pace is picked up here in the second half, John. Nobody's missed a shot. And Georgia Tech wants a timeout. Not much you can do when people are inhuman. They're not missing anything. 58-39 is the Duke lead and will return to Durham, North Carolina for more ACC action in a moment. Eleven million Americans have diabetes. About five million don't know it. Diabetes is a disease which deprives our bodies of energy. Symptoms include excessive thirst, urination, hunger, weight loss or drowsiness or tingling numb sensations in the extremities. Diabetes damages nerves and blood vessels, causes heart and kidney failure, gangrene and stroke. It's the leading cause of blindness among people over 45, the third leading cause of death by disease. There's still no cure, but with a careful balance of diet, medication, exercise and insulin, many diabetics lead virtually normal, even strenuous lives. Life is becoming easier for diabetics, with medical advances like this simple blood test for immediate monitoring of sugar insulin balance. If you're a diabetic, get a handle on it. Follow your doctor's advice. Diabetes needn't take you for a ride. 24 hours a day, 365 days a year of the most exciting sports action ever on ESPN. With a greater variety of events and more live programming than we've ever shown before. So much action that you won't want to miss your favorites. That's why ESPN offers you a special monthly programming guide. That's ESPN and nothing but ESPN. It's called Sports Guide. Every issue of Sports Guide is 16 pages packed with all the month's programming on ESPN. It's the easy way to plan your ESPN viewing a month in advance. And if you act now, we'll send you 12 issues of Sports Guide for the price of 10. That's right, your first two issues are free. You pay the incredible low price of less than 30 cents an issue. To order Sports Guide at this low introductory price, send a check or money order for $3.50 to ESPN Sports Guide, Box 1840, Bristol, Connecticut, 06010. That's ESPN Sports Guide, Box 1840, Bristol, Connecticut, 06010. Order now and save. Welcome back to Durham, North Carolina. Kevin Slayton along with John Andres here at the campus of Duke University, and it's a happy day for the Blue Devils. They lead 58-39 with 18 minutes left over Georgia Tech, and they've been very impressive, John. They've come out as we take another look at what happened underneath on the last possession. John Sally there in the dark shirt for Georgia Tech working underneath, getting that nice pass. The ball moved around so well, that pass came from Tim Harvey. Price, he got Dawkins to go up in the air, and then Henderson blocked it. 
That's three times now they've blocked some of his shots. England triple crown effort. He's two for two from that range in the second half, and he has eight in the second half. England cannot be left open. He's destroying Georgia Tech with his shooting. He's got 12 overall, eight in the second half, and Billis has whistled for his third foul. Well, they have scored, Duke has, on their first five possessions in the second half, twice on three-pointers and three on regular buckets. Mark Price throwing that nice lead pass inside. Tim Harvey getting the ball underneath, being played very well from behind. 61 to 39. Price lets it go. He's forcing it now. Harvey gets the rebound. He gets tied up, and Allery just waiting to block it. Finally did. Dawkins with a nice pass. England tries to save it, but Price comes back the other way now for Georgia Tech. Nice speed and another one back to oh. Harvey. That's how you run the break. Great, great play. Good passing out there. Anthony Bird delivered that final pass to Harvey. Well, the lead is 20 points, and Georgia Tech, while they've had the basketball in the second half, has not been that ineffective. But Duke has been unconscious, and Allery keeps it up. They've scored the first six times they've had the ball. A lot of unconventional passing going on here by Duke. They're breaking all the rules by throwing those long passes, some of them cross court, but they're getting away with them. 22-point lead. That's their biggest of the game. Sally way outside into the big man, Harvey. Nice turnaround touch, and he drops it all. That's Harvey an with impressive eight touch that you allude to. Kevin, that was a very nice move. It's tough to shoot the ball so softly in front of the basket. The lead is 20. Anderson along the baseline. Well, they've still got to do something, Georgia Tech, that is, John, to shake Price loose. He's not getting the shots that he wants. Dawkins directed traffic at the other end. Now he lets the one go, and it's nowhere near the mark, but Allery gets the rebound. It's been so impressive. The lob for Dawkins, and Price had no recourse but the foul. The great jumping ability of Johnny Dawkins is always a threat. Here he gets behind Price. Creates a lot of contact on that play with his great jumping ability and draws a foul. Dawkins will shoot two at the line. Dawkins with three fouls. Billis also has three for Duke. And Dawkins, who's just a 67% free throw shooter, hits his first free throw of the day. Johnny Dawkins, one of the most sought after players last year at Mackin High School and Mackin Catholic in Washington, D.C. 22 point Duke lead and they've just done nothing wrong. They have scored on their first seven possessions of this second half. Sally along the baseline, it won't go. Allery, who else? There to grab the rebound. They lead by 22 and they could increase it. It's one of those days, John, where everything Duke does goes right, except that. <laughs> Bird was to steal and even that went right. <laughs> They didn't get the basket. Anglin has been whistled down for the foul. And that is just his first foul. Well, David Henderson turned the ball over, and up court comes Anthony Bird. Anglin reaching in. Foul situation on that one. You can see uh, Bird wondering. John, they've called it an intentional foul, and so Bird will get two shots. That's a rare call in the middle of the game. It certainly is. It, uh, it didn't certainly look intentional. It looked like it was an intentional swipe at getting the ball, but not, not committing a foul. Exactly. Bird hits the first uh, free throw. He's got five points. They trail by 21. And he's got them both. So Bird hits a pair and pulls them to within 20, if you can say such a thing. 15-21 left. Duke has the basketball and the big lead. Georgia Tech in his own defense now. Dawkins with that cross-court pass again, John. 
You know, you talk about playing at home and what a great asset it is. And I'll tell you, it's unbelievable some of the scores played at different teams' places this year. You look at this matchup, Georgia Tech won by a point at home, and they're losing by 20 here, and England fires another one. Chip England. He's lighting it up in the second half. Well, I tell you, when the three-point rule came into the ACC in his uh, senior year, do you think he was happy? Wow. <laughs> his eyes lit up. Pearson at the other end cans the jumper, and the lead is still 20. But Georgia Tech just can't seem to get a run. And a reason, because they haven't been able to get the ball to Price. Anderson in the lane. Well, that's not his baby. He misses the shot, but the foul is whistled against Pearson. As we said earlier, it seems every time Duke comes down, they get something, whether it be a field goal or something from the foul line, but they're not being contained enough by Georgia Tech. John, I'm surprised as we look at Pearson and now Anderson, who will shoot two, that uh, Georgia Tech has not gone after Dawkins with Price. Here in the second half, he came into the half with three fouls. You got to get rid of him or Price isn't going to do a thing. That's pretty obvious. And the minute he left the game before, Price really got rolling. Got a few hoops, got into the game more, is handling the ball better. Anderson hits both of the free throws, and the lead is 22 again. And here is that matchup. Price seems a little bit tentative. Don't want to do anything except let that jumper go. There he is free for a three-pointer. What a shooter. You can't let him open for a second. It's a pleasure to watch. Mark Price. He gets it off so quickly. A 19-point lead now for Duke. Oh, about 12 more of those, and Zach uh, will be back in it. <laughs> Just 12. <laughs> England with a fine pass to Henderson. He drives the lane. The shot won't go, and a fine rebound by Sally. He got away with it that time. He took that bonus step. There are a lot of officials here in the audience at uh, Duke's home court also. They saw it, and even if it hadn't occurred, they would have seen it. There's Price from the baseline. He rushed that one a little bit. He did. He didn't have that ball in his hand very long. Sally commits his third foul on the rebound effort. 69 to 50, 13 and a half minutes left. And Anderson comes out of the game for Duke. Interesting thing about Mark Price, he tied his father's high school uh, tournament scoring record of 42 points. His father, Dennis Price, a former great player at Oklahoma and uh, an assistant coach in the NBA with Phoenix, and that's a, a real rare thing. His father was an All-American at Oklahoma. Interesting. Here's Allery. He can't get it. He was intimidated by Sally. Billis inside lets it get up, but it won't go, and Sally, I believe, whistled for that foul. It's called against Sally. You know, when young players grow up and their fathers are athletes, a lot of times they play against each other. I wonder if uh, Mark is able to beat his father. It wouldn't surprise me if his father could still beat him. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, his father better guard him closely or <laughs> Price will shoot the lights out of the bucket. Uh, it's interesting to me why Price ended up at Georgia Tech instead of Oklahoma. His father probably beat him up, though. You know how guys get when they get older, they get more physical, <laughs> and uh, that's why he's such a great outside shooter. <laughs> and if the basket's in his father's backyard, his father's the unofficial referee, right? <laughs> that's right. Billis hits the first free throw. The lead is 20. And he misses the second one. Sally, with his fourth foul, had to leave the game. And Bradford came in to replace him. 20-point lead for Duke with 13 minutes. But don't go away, folks, because in this ACC, although they can't do that, Georgia Tech could get back in it with a three-point rule. Wake Forest and Maryland coming your way next here on ESPN. Another so key ACC battle. England's being picked up out so high. Georgia Tech has the message on him. Anthony Bird playing him very respectful. Allery, you can't leave him alone. Probably by nature, John, he is a forward. As you look at Sally resting with four fouls. And Duke hopes that they can recruit the big man. They say they've got a seven-foot-two guy coming in next year and move Allery to forward. Duke, Duke is hitting a great percentage of their shots. Allery says, you're messing with my turf, baby. Get out of here. <laughs> He's having a great game. He sure is. Very efficient. Bradford, or Pearson, I should say, go in the lane, and the foul called against Duke, and probably Allery. We'll wait and see. It is Allery. 
and only a second foul. He has a tendency to get into foul trouble, but not so this afternoon. Pearson will go to the line to shoot a pair. Danny Pearson on the move. He averages nine points a game for this team. Also five rebounds, a six five inch freshman. And he drops the first free throw. And he's from Eau Claire High School in Columbia, South Carolina. And he knocks home the second end of it. Eight points now for Pearson. Five block shots for the Blue Devils. Two of them have come from their guard, Dawkins. 20-point lead for Duke, and they've got the ball inside for Allery. Harvey got called for the foul. He was trying to front Allery, but it didn't work out. And we've got an official's timeout on the floor. A 20-point Duke lead with 11.53 left. A big game for them, as we mentioned before. Positioning in the ACC postseason tournament rests on this game for both of these clubs. We'll return for more right after this. Playboy. It brings you the best of everything. Behind the pages of Playboy, you'll find the authors who create the best sellers. Had a fear of success. Yes, I have. Interviewers who reveal the person behind the personality. Award-winning sports analysts and forecasters who give you an up-close look at the teams, the players, and all the action. Playboy's cartoonists point out the humor in today's world with a rare mix of art and wit. <laughs> then there's Playboy's photographers, masters at capturing the beauty of the world's most breathtaking women. Playboy also tips you off to the latest styles, tunes you into the hottest sounds, and stirs your spirit of adventure with exciting new ideas. Informative, entertaining, and provocative. Playboy, the magazine that gives you a monthly ticket to the best of the good life. And right now, you can get 12 months of Playboy delivered right to you for only $18.50. That's half the newsstand price. So enjoy the very best, the wit, wisdom, and imagination of today's most creative people. Become a Playboy subscriber and step into the exciting world of Playboy. To order your subscription, phone toll-free 1-800-544-1000 and get 12 issues of Playboy for only $18.50. Save $18.50 off the newsstand price. Basic subscription rate, 12 issues, $22. And with your paid subscription, we'll send you this rich-looking rabbit head keychain as a free bonus gift. So phone toll-free 1-800-544-1000. Get a full year subscription to Playboy for only $18.50. You'll get the rabbit head keychain free with your paid subscription. So phone toll-free 1-800-544-1000. Welcome back, Durham, North Carolina. Kevin Slayton along with John Andres for this ACC basketball. And we've got, of course, the... NCAA Basketball Championship Tournament. It all begins March 15th on ESPN, 7 o'clock Eastern Time. And you'll see some action. I'll tell you, there's some great teams participating, will be participating in the tournament this year, John. It's almost impossible to pick a champion. So I'm going to put you on the limb and ask you to pick one. <laughs> That's why it's so, uh, so interesting. College basketball is really evened out now. No one's running away with it, as you say. Um, I feel that if Virginia can get the ball into Big Ralph Sampson a little bit more, I, I, I just, uh, I find it hard to look around them. I think he's an unstoppable force if they get a little more out of him. I'll start with them. <laughs> That's a pretty good place to start <laughs> and end. You got to look at Houston. They were in the Final Four last year. North Carolina also in the Final Four. You got to like those ball clubs. I think it'll be a dark horse. It won't be anybody that people pre predict will win. Can Indiana, Indiana over, right, as you were going to yeah. say, overcome their latest bad news with Ted Kitchell? Very difficult blow for them to lose him with a back injury. Before that had happened, I'd like to, to point at them and say they're going to be the team. Bobby Knight at the helm. He's a tough man down coach. Allery from 15. That's one of the rare shots they've had missed this half. And Phyllis decides to follow it up with a bucket anyway. 
22 point lead and they've really had some balance in scoring as Bradford fires one up couldn't get anything except Phyllis on the rebound 18 for Allery 16 for Dawkins 15 for England Emma now in there he replaced England or excuse me he replaced Dawkins Allery again tried it from there a moment ago great feed but it's knocked away and it's going to belong to Duke Pearson could have retrieved it but he let it go Duke has made very few mistakes in this game. Long lob off the inbounds play, and Bradford has nothing else that he can do except foul Billis, and he does that. You know, I wonder if Duke has evolved into this long lead pass situation today, or if it was really a game plan. Chip England throwing that long lead pass again. They have succeeded. I've never seen a team succeed so with long lead passes like Duke has today. Maybe they spotted something in the Georgia Tech defensive setup. They certainly have been sleeping. You would think after five or six, you'd wake up. Allery off the glass. Nice defensive work by Harvey. He intimidated him. Bradford at the other end feeds it off. Pearson off the glass. It won't go. And Phyllis comes away with it. Actually, Bradford had the shot, but he was tentative and passed it up. Allery at the end of the break. It won't go down, but he draws the foul against Bird, who comes up limping. That's like stopping a Mack truck when Allery gets his six foot eight frame going. Well, Anthony Bird at 6'2 going to try and stop this moving vehicle here. Somebody Al get the number of that freight train. Allery at 6'8 uh, has a lot of size, and Bird uh, at 6'2 had a lot on his hands. Bird's injured, and he's going to come out of the game. Bird's got some strong numbers there, 18 points and nine rebounds. But you can't do it alone. That is very deceptive. Guys had a major impact on this game. Duke has out rebounded Georgia Tech two to one. 26 rebounds to 13 today. What a difference. Sally comes back into the game. He's got four fouls, but he's going to play until he fouls out. Allery will shoot a pair. Anthony Bird. He doesn't miss many free throws. Well, no, no sooner are the words out of my mouth. If you ever, if you ever want to make sure somebody's going to miss, just say that he won't miss. He'll make this one. I bet you a ride to the airport. What a genius! You know what the heck, John? Five free throws today for Allery. 19 points. Been all over the place. Two block shots. What a game for the freshman. He did everything out in Arizona when he was a senior in high school. Nice move by Harvey as he spins to the bucket. Big. 10 points for the big guy. Big meaning 6'10, 240. He was 300 pounds in his junior year in high school, Tim Harvey. Been on a diet. Down to 240. 21 point lead for Duke. The crowd has settled back into a little rhythm here at the Cameron Indoor Arena. And look at Allery with a fine touch. Left-handed, too. So he's over the 20-point barrier. He leads all scores this afternoon. 21 points. 23-point lead for Duke. Bradford pulls up. He can't hit it. Henderson clears it. And here come the Blue Devils. Emma leads the charge this time. They might as well go to work on their three-point shot. Price is there to catch the deflection off Sally. He's going to the hoop. He meant business, and Emma's going to pick up an intentional foul there. Absolutely. No question about that one being intentional. Well, if you're going to do it, that's how you should do it. He grabbed onto Price, making sure that Price wouldn't get himself hurt. Mentioning Allery's 20 points, he also has nine rebounds in the game. What a game he's had, and he's going to get a rest. The crowd comes to their collective feet for Allery. As he sits down on the Duke bench, Anderson in to replace him, number 44. Price will shoot two. He hasn't missed yet from the line. So now let's see if I put the kiss of death on him. It didn't work. <laughs> He's too good. 87% on the season from the line. Got a couple of more games to see if he can be the first freshman ever to lead the ACC in scoring. And that's amazing when you think of the likes of David Thompson and 
millions of names actually have gone on to greatness in basketball. And he's hanging in there on his average today with his free throw shooting. He's hit seven of seven from the line. He's hit three three pointers and just one bucket that was worth two points. He's got 19. Or excuse me, 15. A whistle and a foul at the other end, and it's going to be called against Greg Wilson. That's his first. Todd Anderson got free. You got the reward now for running hard. You beat your man down the court, Anderson, as Anderson did. David Henderson picked him up and gave him that nice lead pass. Nothing better when you run hard and work on the court to get paid for it. And that's what Anderson did on that play. Very frustrating when you work very hard to get free and move without the ball and your teammates don't pick you up. Anderson, who has four points, all of them free throws, misses that one. We, we mentioned it earlier, Duke, a very, very good free throw shooting team. Anderson now with five points. Bradford in trouble to Price. Nice move. Feeds it outside to Bradford. Can't hit it. Phyllis gets the rebound. One of those days for Georgia Tech. Henderson along the baseline. They just can't do anything wrong. They've scored on 16 of 20 possessions in the second half, John. I'll tell you, Mike Krzyzewski has to be very proud of Johnny Dawkins on that play. Instead of forcing a one-on-one -on -one move, he dribbled to the middle of the court and got the ball to the open man. That's leadership. And Georgia Tech throws it away. 80 to 56. The lead has swelled to 24, the largest for Duke today, with eight and a half minutes left. Hang in there, folks, because Maryland and Wake Forest coming up next. Emma with a great move, and it falls. Well, as I said, on these kind of days, they all fall. They might as well pop it from midcourt. What a shooting percentage, Duke has. Foul before the shot. Mark Price wants to shoot somebody now. Well, actually, it's a timeout before the shot. That's what they're going to call not a foul. Georgia Tech requested a timeout before the shot. So, with a score 82 to 56, Duke in total command here with 820 left. Let's take a break, and we'll come back to Durham, North Carolina. I love fine automobiles. I like the hum of a perfectly tuned engine, the look of a snappy sports car, the thrill of a good Formula One race. And I especially like the feeling of a solid old friend like this as I travel down the road. If you're like me, if you appreciate great cars, then get turned on by the finest cars in the world. You'll find them on the pages of Road and Track magazine with stories and photos so vivid, it's the closest thing to being there. And now with this TV offer, you can get a full year, 12 monthly issues of Road and Track for half the regular subscription price. That's less than 75 cents an issue for the most respected magazine in the auto world. Road and Track, the authority. It helps you keep up with all that's new in today's changing world of cars. You'll check out the best of them. On the road, on the track, under the hood, and behind the wheel. You'll get the real story with results from the finest road tests in the industry. With Road and Track, you'll enjoy the sheer sleek beauty of tomorrow's cars and the classic elegance of yesterday's leaders. So be a part of the changing world of cars every month. Do it now and save 50% off the regular subscription price. Save even more off the newsstand cost. Just call 1-800-544-2000 to subscribe. That's a toll-free call, 1-800-544-2000, to get one year, 12 exciting issues for only $8.97. You save 50%. Keep up with all the dramatic changes taking place as they happen. Subscribe to The Authority, Road and Track. Call 1-800-544-2000 today. We are back in Durham, North Carolina. Kevin Slayton along with John Andres, 82 to 56, Duke in the lead. And Bobby Cremens and his Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets, John, must be wondering about this time if they didn't walk into the wrong gym. <laughs> well, they've had a rough time on the road this year, a winless situation. 
But they tell you, they have come into some very tough defense by Duke. Duke has not allowed them to get into the game, and it started right at the outset. You can see the balanced scoring attack. Allery, Dawkins, and England all in double figures. Price leads the way with 18 for Georgia Tech, but that's misleading. He's had a shadow on him all day in the person of Johnny Dawkins. Seven of his points have come from the free throw line. So Allery has had himself a good day. Actually, Allery has 21 points. 82, 56, 820 left as the officials get things together down on the floor. Georgia Tech has possession of the basketball. I don't know what the problem is. John, I don't think anybody expected Duke to come in here and blow Georgia Tech out the way they have. No way. The last several games have been very close between the two teams. A one-point game earlier this year down at Georgia Tech, won by Georgia Tech. Last year, a one-point game here. Dawkins set the tempo early. He shut down Price. That takes your confidence away, not only from Price individually, but from the Georgia Tech team. He's their big gun. And the other guys aren't used to having to pick up the slack like that. Sally toward the baseline now. Puts it back out. Pearson. Price. That's a three-pointer. It won't go. Dawkins bothered him just enough at the end of that shot. And here's the long lead pass to Dawkins. Hesitates. Great block by Harvey. Tom Emma threw some lead pass to Dawkins. Right out of the outstretched arms of uh, Mark Price. Emma, the trigger man now, gets it into Henderson. You saw that block from Harvey. 7.40 left. Allery's back in there. And a foul called against Harvey. He's having all kinds of problems inside trying to handle Mark Allery. On the line, number 32, Mark Allery. Just don't want to send him to the free throw line anymore. He misses that one. That's two he's missed today. It's about the only thing that's gone wrong. Bradford at the other end just can't hit it. They can't buy a basket. And Pearson is called for climbing over the back of Todd Anderson. That's the fifth foul against Pearson. He'll have to say adios to this one. Well, those calls go against you when you're on the road. Interesting, too. That was a sort of a fast break situation. I was just thinking the third official uh, in a case like that is really an asset because many times the two officials can't get every angle on the court. But in that case, the third official, because uh, the officials divide the court up, so has the angle. And uh, in that case, Pearson caught for jumping over the guy's back. And he leaves the game with eight points. Anderson rebounds his own miss, and he went to the hoop. And he went there with determination. 84 to 56 now. Duke in the lead. 720 left. Sally with the turnaround and rolls in and he draws the foul. Against Henderson. John Sally's been very quiet here in the second half. Nice perfect bounce pass into Sally. Spins and throws up a lovely soft touch. Sally with 12 on the afternoon, and he'll get a chance to make it 13. Henderson's going to check out, and England comes in for Duke. John Sally's a young man who uh, participated in Athletes for a Better Education. He's an Athletes for a Better Education scholar, and he was uh, a fortunate young man. He was in a situation co-sponsored by the New York Knickerbockers. He's one of five athletes sponsored by them in a New York uh, in, in a uh, Players Association, NBA Players Association, and Labor Department plan to help young athletes who are good scholars. And uh, John Sally's one of the young beneficiaries. And on that inbounds play, England loses it, then picks up a foul. And the big guy Bradford will go to the line. Now they're going to take the ball out of the basket. It will not be a shooting foul. And Bradford will be the trigger man for Georgia Tech. They're down by a bundle, 25. Sally to the basket. Oh, it won't roll home. 
Allery makes sure that he has it. Very few second shots for Georgia Tech with Mark Allery around. Dawkins has been quiet in the second half. He hit that one shot early. Once again, Duke with the cross-court pass. Dawkins into Allery. His shot partially blocked by Harvey. And Georgia Tech comes back the other way with it. This is Price. He's going to the hoop, and it won't roll in. Loose ball underneath. It goes out of bounds, and it belongs to Duke. That was one of the few times we saw Mark Price penetrate to the basket. His offensive strength is away from the basket. Anderson out of the game for Duke, and Billis comes back in. Still a 25-point lead, six and a half minutes left. Allery inside, trying to go on Harvey. Harvey blocked it again. Harvey can get up there with that 240-pound frame. Bradford off the feed, a nice feed off for Price, and Bradford made sure. Price did what you're supposed to do when you lead a break, stop at the foul line and spread that defense. 84 to 61, Duke in the lead. Maryland and Wake Forest to follow here on ESPN. How about Dawkins? He's played with those three fouls for so long. And he has not committed that fourth. England going the baseline, and Bradford just let him walk right around him. 17 now for England. Look at the rebound difference, Jeff. Boy, 31 Mark, to 16. And Mark Gallery has a lot of those rebounds. Mansell with a three-point effort. That doesn't go. Allery's got another rebound, and here come the Blue Devils. Emma's leading the break. He's going for the bucket. He Woo! Gets that describes the afternoon for Duke. <laughs> Everything they get up around the rim is falling in, and Georgia Tech's soft ones aren't falling in. It's like a magnet up there. That's a tough shot. Just hung around the rim and rolled in. What a super move. Tom Emma, what a great shot. Wow. Greg Wilson and David Mills come into the game for Georgia Tech. Harvey and Bradford come out. They're getting their uh, three-point shooters in there. They're down 27. I don't know if it's going to help. Emma converts the free throw and gets the three-point play. 520 left. They need a miracle. They need two miracles. Pull this off. Pearson walked. That they takes the heart miracles. out of you, too. When you turn the ball over, when you're trying to get something going, and you turn the just give it right back to the other team, it just is so deflating. And they've done they did that early. They've done it all day, but they did it early when this was a close ball game. Wasn't close for long. Emma now, 89-61, Duke over Georgia Tech. Great feed from Dawkins to Billis, but he can't hit the shot. And Wilson let it hit the baseline. Tough day for the Yellow Jackets and Bobby Kremens. But a nice day for that man, Mike Krzyzewski, and his Duke Blue Devils. Well, they were due a good game. They've been struggling. Georgia Tech will still own a half game lead in the standings, the ACC standings over Duke, even with this victory for the Blue Devils. Anglin, it won't go this time. Mills is called for the foul. Well, and Williams comes back into the game for Duke. Thus the applause, he replaces Allery. And they're on their feet here in Durham for Mark Allery. What an afternoon for the young freshman from Arizona. What a great day. 89-61. Duke leads it, and he has played a major role in it. And a reminder with four and a half minutes left, we will be picking our Vitalis most valuable player. And he's a pretty strong candidate at this point, although this man at the free throw line, England, would have to figure in there somewhere. I'm very impressed, too, Kevin, with uh, uh, Dawkins' unselfishness and ability to lead the team and not get hungry for his points. As the leading scorer in this team, he's been very content to keep giving the ball up. And that is progress for him because he was playing out of control the last couple of games that he that he had, and he certainly has improved on that today. And what a difference it makes! I'll tell you, this price—if you let him alone for a second, forget it. 
He looks like he'd be a, he in England in a shooting contest would be something to see. And don't get in a game of a horse against either one of those guys. He'll be out here all day. <laughs> or they'll be out here all day. You'll be saying adios <laughs> quick. A foul call against Mansell. 91-64. Duke. The Blue Devils will go to 11 and 14 on the season. Georgia Tech will drop to 12 and 13. Emma with the free throw. You know, you can see the ACC standings with the conference record and their overall records. Emma hits that free throw. Not only are these Duke players young, but they can all shoot free throws, and that is a very important statistic in the years to come when they get in close games. Well, they are as talented as other teams. Dawkins stepped on the baseline, and they're going to let it go. No, they're going to come back. There wasn't much doubt about that. Jay Billis made a nice uh, deflection on that attempted pass inside. There's another, another look, look at it. Well, I didn't see his foot on the line. Didn't look like he hit it there unless he hit it before that. But from originally looking at it, it looked like there wasn't any question. Sally now wants to go one on one. Woo! That wasn't much of a contest. He blew past Billis. 15 points for Sally in a losing cause. Dawkins behind the back to Williams. Wilson knocked it off the glass. They're going to call a foul and they may add goaltending. Let's wait and see. How about this behind the back pass by Dawkins, left handed? Greg Wilson came over and knocked that ball away. And it's just going to be a foul. They will not call a goaltend. So Weldon Williams, he's one of the crowd favorites, doesn't play that much, had six points in the first half. He's just a freshman. And he knocks that one away. He's got seven today. Out of Park Forest, Illinois. He had 14 points coming into the game, so you can see uh, for total for the season, you can see why the fans love him. Mahar comes in, and he replaces Jay Billis. Weldon Williams stands at the line. He's applauding his teammates. He's just happy to be out there, much less to score points. He missed that one. You could hear him call it out as soon as he let it go up. <laughs> Mansell inside to Sally. He didn't go up with it. He gave it to Mansell, and he got the basket. Georgia Tech players inside, John, are unselfish almost to a fault. Great spinning move from Dawkins with the feed to Williams. Heavy traffic. Just pick a number because it was a foul on one of two players and they give it to Wilson. Dawkins is trying to make Will Williams a high point man. How about that spinning move? Here's Johnny Dawkins looking one way, passing the other, and Weldon Williams is the beneficiary. He got flitzed that time by Wilson. As we mentioned, 14 points for the year coming into this game, and he had six in the first half. Fans really... Anxious for Williams to get in double figures. That's seven. He's got eight. Eight points for Weldon Williams. 95 to 68. Duke in the lead with three minutes to go. Virtual certainty. And he hits the next one. Nine points. And they will go over the 100 point mark. And we're going to come back to Durham, North Carolina. The fans are on their feet. Duke with a big lead. This bud's for that first day on the job. This bud's for you, for all you do. The king of beers is coming through. Yeah, just for you, that distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do. This bud's for you. My music keeps me going in more ways than one. If I'm not riding to a concert, I'm flying to one. So I really appreciate Relax. Just me and my Skoll. Skoll's wintergreen flavor is number one with me. Just a pinch gives me real tobacco pleasure without lighting up anytime, anywhere. Mr. Daniel, smoking or non-smoking? Smokeless, darling. Go smokeless with Skoll or Copenhagen. A pinch is all it takes. 
experience one of the best-selling cars in the world. Experience the outstanding performance of the 1983 Mazda GLC with state-of-the-art front-wheel drive, 1.5-liter overhead cam engine, patented independent rear suspension. Experience. Mazda GLC, a real driving experience. experience. And the value, it's an experience in itself. The more you look, the more you like the Mazda experience. You don't have to put up with hotel excuses like the maid, the TV man, or the plumber is gone for the day. Because Holiday Inn gives you this no excuses guarantee. Everything in your room will be right or will make it right. No excuses. Or that night, you stay free. You don't get this guarantee from any other hotel chain. Not one. So, let us take care of you. Holiday Inn gives you a guarantee. Not excuses. Welcome back. Cameron Indoor Arena, Durham, North Carolina. Mark Gallery with the towel draped over his shoulder. Vitalis MVP for this afternoon's game. Had a great game, and he's got a well-deserved rest. Kevin Slayton, along with John Andres. Glad you're with us. Hang in there, folks. We got a good one coming your way next. Wake Forest and Maryland. And you don't think that's important in the standings of the ACC. Everybody playing for placement in that ACC tournament. Nobody wants to draw Virginia or North Carolina. Sally, that was tipped. That will not count. And the foul is called against Weldon Williams. And here comes Mike Tissell into the game, and he doesn't play much either, but he's going to get a shot at it. Mahar goes out. Tissell is a senior from Fairfax, Virginia. The 6'8", 230 pounder. Uh, has to feel like a rookie out there. It's an odd situation, too. He started 19 games last year as a junior, and this year he's been uh, pushed aside by the strong freshman. What a freshman class for Duke. Well, I tell you, Tissot has some body on him. Sally cans the free throw. 6'8", 230, and there's, well, you be the judge, but I don't think there's an ounce of anything but muscle out there, including his eyebrows. Sally hits both. He's got 17 points. England, who has 14 points in the second half alone. Dawkins, he nearly lost it and gave it to Price. Price pulls up for the three-pointer. I'll tell you something. That guy is a That's great, like, great shooter. Took like a layup to him. You know, he'd rather do that than drive and get in closer. 24 points for Price in a losing cause. He'll be the high score of this game. Weldon Williams feeds it off to Emma. And a foul from behind against David Mills. Amazing thing about Price is you feel that he was held under wraps all game, too. He never really got rolling. I can see where the, if anybody played him with uh, uh, some, not the respect that Duke showed for him, he'd have 40 without any problem. He's got five three-pointers. Emma hits the free throw. And of course, he's got that thing that every great shooter has, a fine touch from the free throw line. Seven free throws, but seven to ten. Emma's a good free thrower also. 80% on the season. It's both of those. A long pass to Sally. Here comes the... No, he decides to pull a great move, and he missed it, and England slapped it away. Thought he was going to jam it. Dawkins at the other end off the glass. Dawkins is so tough that he uses the backboard very well in his shots. 100 points for Duke and a great block down at that end by Tissaw. Anglin gets the layup. 102 to 73. What a game for Chip Anglin. Twenty-nine points. Sally inside. Bench is empty. Jackman, Bryant, and Wint come into the game. Williams goes out. You can see what Duke has to fight the rest of the way. Clemson and North Carolina before that ACC postseason tournament. 
Well, Duke had an earlier game this year against New Hampshire when they won by 36 points. I don't think they're going to top that today, but this is certainly one of their bigger wins. The next points that Price scores for Georgia Tech will give him 500 for the season as a freshman. What a great way to open the books on a career. Sally came into this game as a less than 60% free throw shooter, and he's hit seven today from the line. 102 to 75, Duke in the lead. Dawkins is their only remaining starter. Brian, well, he wanted to take a shot, and he hit it. I'll tell you, when the guys that don't play much get in there, they're going to shoot. Sally to the hoop. A great job of drawing the foul by Jay Bryant. And for Sally, if my records are correct, he's out of there. That's five on him. There he goes. Good performance by John Sally in this game. He'll put on some muscle between the uh, seasons now, between now and next year. Good afternoon for John Sally. He's just a freshman. He'll be around. Jay Bryan's going to go to the free throw line. Sally's 6'10 and a half, and he's got some growing to do width-wise now. He'll be a monster when he does. Bryan is just a sophomore. He's at the line for Duke. Harvey comes into the game again for Georgia Tech. The 240-pound freshman out of Pine Field, New Jersey. Brian now will try to make it 105-77. Even the guys who don't play can shoot free throws in this game. And here comes Richard Ford, the junior from Durham, North Carolina, the hometown boy, comes into the game. They list him at 5'10", John, but I think he's more like 5'7". He's a little guy. And he replaces Johnny Dawkins. Poor Jay Bryan, he's got to remember he's got still another free throw to shoot. <laughs> Didn't bother him though, did it? So he gets four quick points since he's been in the game. Ford all over Price, great interception by Tissaw. And hey, these guys are playing for a job. Ford directs traffic. Tell everybody to leave, I'm going to shoot it. Tissaw loses control. The ball was kicked by Wilson of Georgia Tech, and it belongs to Duke. 56 seconds left. Well, Duke has put up 106 points so far in the game. That's the most they've scored in any game this season. Big victory for the Blue Devils. It's a long lob for Tissaw. Can't score, but he gets the loose ball. Jackman inside to Wint. Oh, it won't fall, but look at Bryant. He's going for six points. It won't go in. Price now for Georgia Tech the other way. And Ford hustles back down court and knocks it away. Well, anything he does, they're going to cheer. He's a hometown kid. Another look at it. Yeah, Price almost made it, but Ford got him from behind. David Mills leaves it for Mansell. And he cans the jumper. Got four points. 30 seconds left, 106 to 79, Duke. Ford with a move to the bucket, loses control. And a long pass for Price. This will be 500 points in his freshman year, Woo! and he's got it. What a future that kid has. 12 seconds left as they begin the countdown. Ford moves to the hoop, and he lays it off. Won't go, partially blocked. Two seconds left. Mills lets it go at the buzzer. It doesn't go home. On the final, 106 to 81, Duke with a big victory over Georgia Tech. So the Blue Devils break their losing streak at three, and they pick up their 11th victory this season. For John Andres, I'm Kevin Slate. So long from Durham, North Carolina.